Nikolai. I came here from Sydney, so I'm going to have some funny accent today. Um, <clears throat> I work for a company called Ninefold, where we do um, amazing things with hosting uh, for Rails application, Ruby and stuff. But uh, in my spare time, I hack around uh, mobile applications, uh, particularly with iOS and uh, Ruby Motion. And today I came around to talk about one of my projects, which is based on top of Ruby Motion, talk about the story of this thing, do some live hacking and demos. So I'm a web developer. I did this thing, I do this thing for like 15 years, right? Um, I've, when I started, I looked at this uh, at web, right? It's uh, HTML and some pieces of JavaScript. And I say like, hey, it's simple, right? So there is a button on click and you've got some function and you can quickly make things running. And in web, we've got things like HTML, where you can define a DOM structure, like your object, uh, the, uh, the main object model. We've got CSS to paint things up and make them look nice. And we've got the pieces of JavaScript to uh, like make changes to uh, pages, make them do useful things. Uh, funny thing, all these two pieces, they were successful because they represent a uh, classical MVC structure. Uh, basically, you can think of it like your scripts are your controller. It changes the uh, domain model of your page, and um, you can treat uh, your DOM as a model and CSS as a view, and then it kind of all fills together. A cool thing in, the, in web is that all the three parts, A and V and C, are implemented in different languages. So you have pretty much zero uh, chances to uh, mix them together. Well, you kind of can do uh, inline JavaScript and CSS and HTML, but it's always was considered like bad practice. But it is a sustainable uh, model, right? It's uh, really extendable. It grows really nicely. And uh, yeah, we've got a good progress. On the other end uh, of the spectrum, we've got typical uh, desktop development. Uh, sorry, I feel like I'm in a boy band or something. Um, <clears throat> so uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we've got a typical uh, desktop uh, development style where everything is written in a single language. Right, uh, and compiled down to a native application. We've got like UI libraries where we assign uh, like content to your things through API, make changes, assign event listeners, stuff like that. Um, it works great, but like for us as developers, when it comes to choose how we implement mobile, it's always a struggle, right? As a web developers, like most of Ruby developers are web developers, essentially, uh, we've got used to certain standards, to certain ways to deal with things, like how we, like we've got a certain mindset, how we implement things. And native application uh, development, especially for iOS or Android, the same thing, they came from, uh, they derive from um, desktop development. Right? They came from that branch of things. And it's always like a um, compromise, right? You, you end up with something like, like native web, right? Like something like PhoneGap or something, uh, where you make certain compromises. You want to keep your habits. You want to know how to build things and extend things. But you sacrifice like performance, which is often an issue, uh, resources. Uh, with, in, uh, with hybrid applications, it's real pain in the neck to integrate with actual native application system. If you ever work with a phone gap and try to make in-app in payments, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's really hard. So then RubyMotion appeared, right? And RubyMotion is a project uh, by uh, one of the uh, ex-Apple employees. Uh, what they've done, they created basically a compiler for Ruby, which can convert uh, Ruby basically into Objective-C and then down to a real native application. Uh, so good thing it's 100% Ruby, right? You can write all you, you all things um, in Ruby and like you know the language. The learning curve is small, much smaller. Um, and it's also 100% native. From directly from Ruby, you can access any native APIs, make access like file system, network, 
uh, I don't know, WebGL, WebGL, OpenGL, uh, so the sky is the limit. Unfortunately, you will end up dealing with Apple uh, API, with native API, and you will be thrown in into that desktop developer mindset, which for a web developer is quite a large uh, learning curve. Uh, although you will be familiar with the language and you will be able to spawn a class and uh, uh, know how to do things, but a lot of concepts which you will be dealing with uh, will be completely unfamiliar. Like, a lot of things they do is completely different. Like, even just making simple things as a button is, uh, like, completely new task. You don't know how to do this. You need to go in, read all the API. You need to figure how people, like, how even attach an event listener to, uh, API, to a button. It's all quite different in there. So, uh, that's where my project starts. I, I thought about it back and forth, and I thought, like, Let's think about it. Let's think uh, about a multitude of applications, native applications on uh, your phone. That it is kind of like intranets, right? And um, some of them live on App Store, some live on your application. Um, and then every application is pretty much like a website, right? Um, and then when you type in, uh, icon on uh, your phone. It's kind of like you type in an you know, address in your browser, right? And then you can uh, extend, like, follow this uh, analogy further, like multiple screens on application. You can think about them as uh, multiple uh, pages in a web browser, right? On the same uh, web server. So uh, my thinking is, let's go further. Let's uh, basically build abstraction on top of uh, desktop application, which will uh, represent us interface which is familiar for uh, web developers, and transfer all these um, objects we're dealing with uh, as a web developers into native counterparts. Um, <clears throat> and then we can treat a native app as a web app, although it's not really a web app. Uh, there is no browser. Right? It's just all conceptualized thing, which looks like a browser, feels like a browser, so you as a developer, as a web developer, will instinctively know what to do with this thing, right? But in the end, it will compile everything back to native application. And you don't have to make a choice between like, knowing what to do and accessibility to uh, actual native, uh, native APIs. So I built this project called Andros. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. So what I uh, came up with is to do a short live demo. Um, we've got um, the Andros project available as a Ruby gem. Uh, you can install the gem, and then it will provide you with a template for um, Ruby motion. And you can spawn it kind of like that. You go there, you say, show me the thing. Oh. Come on. And then you can just compile it. Uh, RubyMotion will go through all the gem files, all your files, and compile them uh, into native uh, code. Meanwhile, I'll just show you. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, You've got app folder where we've got layouts which are pretty much HTML, right? Um, and then we've got style sheets where everything is like CSS, and we've got pages where every screen on your application is treated as a, like conceptually as a web page. And it has a context with um, JavaScript is looking uh, DSL, right? So there is like layout, right, with just a button a bunch of CSS which positions it, and a script which basically taps into says like, on top, do you alert, right? Here is the application. It is a completely native application. There is no like overhead or anything. It's compiled down to real thing. So what we're gonna do is to build a calculator app. And I'll show how quickly and easy it is. So let's give it a title. Um, so to show the result, we will use just a label. OK. 
Okay. Well, that's a comfortable desk. You can use like normal glasses. It's all like handled for you. Uh, column. All right. Now let's duplicate it a bunch of times. We're gonna need a bunch of buttons. You have to watch for um, what I'm doing. I'm in a different time zone. I should be asleep right now. Right, percent. And now I need to add, spread these buttons by columns in rows. Uh, that's pretty simple. So a little bit quick. Four, four, four. Uh, this one, two, three, four, five. This is all fives. One, this all four, I guess. That's three, two, come on. This three and this one, right? And um, I'm not gonna bother you with CSS, so I'll just copy it. Upstairs. Can you see it's all right? Not really, right? How about now? Should I make this font size larger? Here you go. Better? Just say me, like, I'm here to please. <laughs> uh, so uh, we wrote uh, HTML and a bunch of, uh, I copied a bunch of CSS, which like paint stuff. Now we can just like rerun the whole thing. Uh, once the actual gem is compiled, it's like the rest of them pretty quick. So you see it starts to look like application, like calculator. Uh, we need to make a double size zero and paint those things a bit. I already have classes in my CSS in here, double, uh, double ops top. So I'll just throw them in. Those will be operations. We run it. Okay, looks more like a calculator, but there is no label for um, number. The thing is that the actual label is up here. It's by default, it's just zero, zero. Uh, in iOS, everything is absolutely positioned. Uh, we emulate through CSS like uh, absolute position and relative scopes, but uh, at this point, it's just by default, it's zero, zero. The cool thing is that we can, come on, come here. Uh, in a console, I create a little hack which is jQuery thing, right? You can, uh, it's called U because we cannot uh, use, uh, like we cannot use dollar thing, but it's same similar concept. See, you can just access it like that, right? And then this thing has like text, it has style, you can assign style, say top equals 80, right? And you see like label moved here real time. You can mangle with right here, like white, it's white, or because it's Ruby and we can do it nicer than JavaScript, you can just throw in a hash. And it supports most of the CSS. Um, so you can go like uh, white, 320, 8, 80 pixels, font size 80, uh, text align, all right. And you can play with it just like that. Um, I already prepared it a little light here, right here in my CSS. I'll just uncomment it. And uh, you can quickly like build UI you, know, you want and uh, you will understand as a web developer what's going on in there. Like it's all classes, all HTML. It's all pretty simple. Uh, 
uh, if you feel like you want to build a uh, UI with the uh, Xcode uh, UI constructor, you also can do that. You can just build a, uh, their file, throw it in, and hook up into a page as a, as a layout. Right here, saying like, layout, my thing. But uh, by default, it's HTML and CSS, so we knew what to do. Um, and final step is the actual um, execution context, the scriptory, how it makes things alive. Um, it is kind of uh, JavaScript style programming, I guess a callback, you specify like, I'll make it larger. Um, you specify like events and a callbacks as blocks. You can also uh, navigate the DOM, like, although it's virtual, it's not rendered. Uh, but you can access it in normal way, say result, exos first, result, and then we can go find all buttons. And then button on top, say handle top button and just go in tap button and say puts button text. Simple enough. Let's see how it works. So now we can uh, do stuff with it. Um, because it's Ruby, we can do nice things, say when it's um, number or uh, dot, decimal point, we just say result text plus equals button text, just append it in there. Probably also erase uh, result if uh, it's initial, initial step, result text equals zero. Let's see how that works. Um, let's build some operations as well. When it's plus, minus, come on, uh, multiply, divide. We save the first number. An operation. And when person hits equal, we calculate. Um, I'll do just really dummy implementation, which is not correct, but it's simple. First norm, second norm equals first norm and current norm. I need to convert both of them to either float or integer. And then I'm just sending operation to first num. And assign result. Make sense? I forgot one thing. When you enter, I start to enter second number, we need to reset the thing. Let's try again. Damn it. Live demo, it's hard. Yay, success. <clears throat> so the cool thing is that as you notice, I didn't touch any iOS at all, right? 
like it's all pure Ruby. There is no native things in there. Like all concepts pretty much make sense, right? Uh, you can like show this thing to any Ruby slash web developer and they will instinctively know what to do with it. Um, cool thing is that uh, conceptually, uh, I, I, uh, under us or UOS, because like it's all about you guys, um, Conceptually, it is kind of like a jQuery. It lives in parallel with your native uh, native infrastructure, with your uh, native APIs. Like at any point right here, you can just start making like you a label and a lock and uh, go with anything you want. All right. Uh, but I'm trying to abstract from that thing and make a, like uh, come find a common ground around web and Ruby. Uh, there are proxies for, say, uh, in Android OS to, say, talk to you file system, which provides you with uh, Ruby-like file open and things like that. Uh, it also has a HTTP stack, a bunch of uh, shortcuts, like you can have icons and things like that. Um, the point here is that it is completely extendable. It is a virtual environment which is just looks like a browser. At any point, you can create your own custom tags as a use, as a components, basically. Uh, you can extend, uh, you can extend uh, inherit any, any class in the system, like unlike a browser or normal. You can just inherit a button or someone else's widget and uh, monkey patch it and do whatever you do as normally is normally like a Ruby developer. So, <clears throat> why is Mars? Because it is friendly for web developers. It reduce, uh, reduces your initial learning curve. You can quickly start building things. You can ship it uh, on, uh, on Apple Store. No, no one will know how you build it. It's by, as far as they are they concerned, it will be completely a native application but it will reduce greatly your learning, initial learning curve. Um, it is Ruby friendly. A lot of things you would normally do with Ruby Motion and uh, iOS development quite un Ruby. Like you need to do like memory allocation, um, all the APIs like talking to HTTP or file system or things like that, or say JSON serialization, they done through, uh, in iOS through their own Word you, but uh, we got used to a lot of certain things in Ruby uh, environment. Like, uh, so we've got proxies for that as well, so you can feel at home in there. Uh, and it's independent, like it's not tied to any uh, provider at this point. Uh, like it's a rebellious thing in like in, a lot in the wing of uh, uh, Ruby community. So it's monkey patchable. It's all up to you how you implement these things. Uh, you're not dependent on uh, native APIs anymore. And it's hackable, right? It's abusable, it's Ruby. You can uh, make changes to it. Uh, you can extend it through uh, Ruby gems. You can, uh, the whole thing is actually like four Ruby gems. You can like pick things separately, like throw what you don't need, add new ones, like extend it. Um, and big what if moment is that a Ruby Motion uh, work, the Ruby Motion guys work hard to deliver Android support. Uh, like any day now, they should uh, release a new version of Ruby Motion, which will provide us with Android support. Uh, so the big goal of, of the Android project is to provide this webish interface, webish proxy, which is, will be useful for uh, web developers. But underneath it can compile to anything because, as you saw, it does not really touch us like on, on your application level, it does not touch the native API. And we can abstract from that and build our own thing. We can build our own thing as we see it fits, uh, which is kind of a great moment, I guess. Um, and that's pretty much concludes my talk. I'm trying to keep it short. Um, not large, it's my pet project, I guess. Uh, pardon me? Repeat the question. Um, the question was how large the community behind under us. Um, it is uh, well known in the Ruby Motion community, but under, um, 
you can say that RubyMotion community itself is not that large. It is a commercial project. Uh, uh, you need to pay a license fee for using RubyMotion, which is, I think it's a good idea because uh, like you need to make money in the end and I'm happily, happy to pay them. Uh, but it is commercial project and the, the community, RubyMotion community itself is not that large, but within the community, it's a known project. But it is like out of whack project right now, right? Uh, we're trying to figure how things work, uh, what, we, uh, what we can get away with, uh, like the sky is the limit, but it is non-standard at this point. It's more research and having fun. No, I don't think it's gonna be blocked by Apple because by in, in the end, RubyMotion uses Apple uh, API. It uses Apple infrastructure, like it uses Apple compilers. In the end, um, there are heaps of applications already on App Store, and it just keeps growing. I'm thinking about it, but it's not. Yep. Ah, uh, the question. Sorry, the question was uh, what was I thinking about making. Uh, version of Andrew Ross in Swift. Um, Swift is young, no one really knows how it's gonna play out at this point. It is really interesting uh, language, I'm quite excited about it, uh, but conceptually it's still Objective-C, right? The good thing about uh, RubyMotion for us Ruby developers is that it gives an opportunity to build applications without switching a context. Uh, the uh, Swift, it kind of looks simple and scriptable as a scripting language, but conceptually it is not scripting language. Uh, it is actually uh, like compilable language with uh, static typing. Like a lot of things you do in Swift uh, correlate like one to one to what you do in Objective-C. It's just nicer looking API. Um, not at the moment. It's a, a, I forget repeating things, I'm assuming like everyone hears them. Uh, the question was, do we support auto layout uh, in CSS? At this point, not, but the goal is to basically wrap it around, uh, again, uh, web idioms with uh, media queries and pseudo classes. I'm actually working on it right now. Uh, yeah, because it's virtual, like everything needs to be uh, implemented manually pretty much. Uh, and uh, the amount of features which we support in CSS and HTML, uh, they keeps growing. It's an ongoing process. At this point, we support most of this stuff from CSS, like padding, margins, positioning, backgrounds, uh, colors, uh, like things like that. But like no, it's not supported 100%. I'm basically going after whatever is most useful at this point. Yeah, but auto layout is pretty much the next thing. Um, no, the question was, uh, does it work for OS 6? Um, not really. I'm I'm not desktop developer. I'm not really interested in that at this point. But the good thing is that. API for uh, iOS and uh, OS X development, it's pretty similar. It's a lot, this, a, lo a lot of the same. And I guess the, at the point when we make out layout work and all these media queries work, we should be able to abstract from uh, actual device or uh, platform you run it on. Okay, the question was uh, which features uh, I really want to get in. Um, a few things. Like first, uh, first of them is auto layout is like a uh, no-brainer. It's like the first thing because especially now when Apple released the new iPhone, uh, my goal is basically to allow you to uh, make layouts uh, like pretty much uh, uh, be independent from a platform, from a device. So you could uh, write in CSS, specify how things should look like on iPad, iPhone, different sizes of screens. So auto layout, rotation support, uh, that's one thing. Uh, another thing I'm working uh, is uh, game development. Uh, so as you know, in iOS 7, uh, Apple released a Sprite Kit, which is a like, nice library for 2D games development. So what I'm trying to do is to build a little uh, nice, useful uh, game engine on top of that. The, cool, the good thing is that Ruby is extremely good for game development. Like I wrote a bunch of games and they 
cool thing that Ruby, in Ruby you can write nice DSLs, right? You can overload operations, setters, you can write really neat uh, uh, APIs for your units and express uh, all the logic and relationships really cleanly and nicely. And uh, yeah, so the goal is to provide you with this feature, but underneath it will render everything to, to Sprite Kit, and in the end, you will end up with native application. That's kind of exciting moment. Yep, any more questions? Cool, thank you.